In this video, we're going to work on a two-dimensional motion problem with multiple parts. So let's go ahead and begin. A ball rolls horizontally off a 500 meter cliff at a speed of 5 meters per second. Well, let's begin with a picture. So let's say this is the cliff and here is the ball. And it's going to roll off the cliff and then it's going to hit the ground. How long will it take for the ball to hit the ground? Now, what I like to do is I like to define the positions of interest. We'll call this position A, which is the initial position, and position B, or the final position. Now, we know the height of the cliff. It's 500 meters. And we know the ball has a horizontal speed of 5 meters per second. Let's write that better. So with this information, how can we find the time it's going to take from, for the ball to go from position A to position B? How long will it take for it to hit the ground? Now hopefully you have a list of physics equations with you. If not, I recommend that you go to YouTube and in the search bar, type in kinematics, organic chemistry tutor. I have a video entitled kinematics, which will give you a list of formulas that you need to solve two dimensional motion problems, even one dimensional motion problems as well. Also check out my video projectile motion. That's going to be more of the two dimensional motion problems. And it's going to have even more formulas for you, for you to use when solving, uh, these types of problems. But the equation that we could use is this one. Since we're dealing with vertical motion, y final is equal to y initial plus vy initial t plus one half at squared. Now, there's a lot of variables in this formula. Our goal is to calculate t. Now, what is y initial and y final? If we assume this to be ground level, that means position B is at a y value of zero. So that's going to be y final. B is the final position, A is the initial position. y initial, well, that's going to be the height of the cliff. That's at 500 meters. So we have that. Now, what about VY initial? Now, the ball initially is moving horizontally. It only has an X component. It doesn't have a Y component. So for any object moving in horizontal, in a horizontal direction, the vertical velocity is going to be zero. So that's VY initial at point A. Now, the vertical acceleration for any object in free fall, it's always going to be negative 9.8 because that object is under the influence of gravity. So any object on Earth, under free fall, it's going to have that vertical acceleration. By the way, you should check out my other video. If you go to YouTube and type in free fall physics, organic chemistry tutor, I have another video that talks about how to solve problems with objects in free fall, including objects like this one. So feel free to check out those three videos, free fall physics, kinematics, and projectile motion for those of you who want more problems. So now let's finish this problem. Y final is zero. Y initial is 500. V Y initial is zero. And then it's plus one half. The acceleration is negative 9.8 and we need to solve for T. So moving the 500 to the other side, we're going to get negative 500. One half times negative 9.8, that's going to be negative 4.9. So now what we need to do is divide both sides by negative 4.9. These will cancel and we'll get T squared is equal to negative 500 divided by negative 4.9. That's going to be 102.04. Taking the square root of that number, 
this will give us 10.1. So let's put that here. It's going to take 10.1 seconds for the ball to go from position A to position B. So that's the answer for the first part of the problem. Now let's move on to part B. How far from the base of the cliff will the ball land? In other words, what is the range of this projectile? A projectile is simply an object under the influence of gravity. In fact, gravity is the only force acting on a projectile. So a rocket would be considered a projectile because it's affected by the thrust of the engine. But any object that's moving in air only under the influence of gravity, by definition, is a projectile. So how can we calculate the range of this projectile? The range is simply the horizontal distance, or you could say horizontal displacement. In this problem, they're the same, since the object doesn't change direction. So the range is going to be dx. And if you want to find the displacement, it's equal to the velocity multiplied by the time. So if we want to find a horizontal displacement, it's vx times t. Now for a projectile, the horizontal velocity is constant. The vertical velocity changes with time because the object has a vertical acceleration. But if you want to just find the range, it's simply equal to vx times t. In this example, vx is 5 meters per second, and we know the object is going to be moving for 10.1 seconds based on the answer that we got in part A. So 5 times 10.1, that gives us a range of 50.5 meters. That's the answer for part B. Now, what about part C? What is the final speed of the ball just before it hits the ground? Now, at this point, we need to realize that the ball doesn't just have an x component. Its velocity has a y component as well. The x component is going to remain constant. It's not going to change because the acceleration in the x direction is 0. However, the vertical velocity, the y component, will change because there is an acceleration in the y direction. To find the new vertical velocity at point B, it's going to be equal to the initial vertical velocity plus at. So this is the formula v final is equal to v initial plus at, just in the y direction. vy initial is 0. The acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.8. And the time that this object is going to be in flight is 10.1 seconds. Negative 9.8 times 10.1. That gives us a vertical velocity of negative 98.98 meters per second. So right now, the ball at point B, just before it hits the ground, has a horizontal velocity of 5 meters per second and it has a vertical velocity of negative 98.98 meters per second. So this is Vx and this is Vy. Our goal is to find the final speed so we need to get V. Using the Pythagorean theorem, V is going to be the square root of Vx squared plus Vy squared a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. If you want to calculate c, the hypotenuse, it's equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So vx is 5, and vy is negative 98.98. So go ahead and plug that in. So v is 99.1 meters per second. This is the answer to part C. That is the final speed. Speed is always positive. 
velocity can be positive or negative. Now, part D is asking for the final velocity of the ball just before it hits the ground, whereas part C is asking for the final speed. We have the final speed, but to get the final velocity, we need the direction. Remember, velocity is speed with direction. We have the magnitude, which is the speed, but we need to get the direction. In other words, we need to get the angle. So let's calculate the angle of theta. The angle inside of that acute triangle is going to be the reference angle. And to find it, we're going to take arctan of Vy over Vx. Now, we're only going to use the absolute values of Vy and Vx. We don't need to worry about the negative sign right now. So it's 98.98 over 5. This gives us a reference angle of 87.1 degrees. But I'm going to get the angle measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. That's going to be 360 minus the reference angle. So 360 minus 87.1 will give us an angle of 272.9 degrees, which tells us that the vector, the velocity vector, is in quadrant 4. It's moving in that direction. So part C, the speed, the final speed just before it hits the ground, is simply 99.1 meters per second. Part D, the final velocity, is the combination of these two answers. The final velocity of the ball just before it hits the ground is 99.1 meters per second at an angle of 272.9 degrees counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So that's basically it for this video. So now you know how to solve a typical two-dimensional motion problem. So if you want more problems like this, check out my videos on projectile motion, kinematics, and free fall physics.